Hi all. In this video, let's try to understand the web workers. So a way of executing the multi-threading in JavaScript and how to use that uh, and the data communication between the main thread and the worker thread and few points to note while we are working with the web workers and the common use cases where we want we can use the web workers. So let's see that. So before that, we need to understand few points like JavaScript is a single threaded. It means at any point, it can only run one script at a time. Multi scripts cannot execute at the same time. If you give any of the big file, big script to be executed, the page becomes unresponsive and user can't do any action unless that script is executed completely. So it's me, it means you're blocking the UI completely. So we can achieve a multi-threading so, so that uh, you can execute a JavaScript file, which takes a long time and which has a huge computation uh, tasks. So let's see that. So these are the workers. So the worker can be created with the help of this. So what this web worker will help is, so this web worker will help us. It will allow the JavaScript code to run in a separate thread. So that is entirely different from the main thread of the JavaScript. So it seems to be like a multi-threading in JavaScript. So it will allow us to work, uh, run this script outside of the JavaScript in a separate thread. So how to create this web worker? So we, we can use this constructor function and we can create the web worker. So this is how we can create. So this should be the path of our web worker. So this index.js is our main JavaScript file and we are pointing to the web worker file here. So this should be the path for the web worker script. So if this script is found, then it will be downloaded asynchronously and it will be executed line by line. If this is not found, then the worker script would be failed and it will not interrupt or disturb the main JavaScript content or the application flow. Okay, it silently it will fail. That's it. So this is how we are going to create the web worker. So next to that, so how the data communication will happen from the main thread to the worker thread. So let's see that. So we have a uh, diagram here. So let's discuss with that. So this is a main thread means this is a JavaScript thread and this is a worker thread. In the main thread, we've seen how to create an object or a web worker. So once you have created a worker, web worker thread. So now if you want to communicate with between this main thread to the worker thread, you have two things like post message. So with the help of this post message from the main thread can call this post message and it can pass some data to its worker thread. So this worker thread needs to handle or catch this post message, right? So for that, it will have on message event. So once the post message is done by the main thread, the worker thread can handle that in on message event. This event is similar to our uh, any of the JavaScript event. So now if you want to communicate or transfer something to the um, worker thread, the main thread will call this post mes message and it will pass some data. And this on message event, worker thread can handle that event. So if worker thread want to communicate with the main thread, the flow is similar. So it will call the post message and it will pass some data. And there the main thread also will have the on message event to handle this post message function. So this is how the communication will happen between the main thread and the worker thread. Let's see that with an example. So we have seen, we have created an object for the web worker. So to this worker, so as soon as you create this, this will start executing. So this will execute. This is the worker script. So in this worker script, if you if you observe in this worker script, in the first starting point itself, he has called the main thread with the post message and he said he passing some text. So as soon as you pass the post message in the worker thread, what we have discussed here, this on message event would be triggered. Okay. So the worker thread is trying to communicate as soon as you create an object to the worker web worker, the script will start execute. And as soon as it is executed, it is calling the main thread by passing some message worker running. So <clears throat> with this post message, as soon as you send this post message in this main thread, this event would be triggered on message tree event worker dot on message event we need to handle so that the worker if called it, it calls in in this event dot data will be having the the data which we are sending from the worker thread 
okay so that we can extract that data so event dot data means you can extract this data this can be any any it can be object or string anything so this is how the worker thread has sent a message to the main thread and main thread can handle this in this way so here just we are logging it but we can do that whatever the uh, use case or the business case we have so now if the main thread want to communicate with the worker thread so it also can do the same thing worker dot post message it is trying to send some data like this so now in the worker script also we need to have some event like on message event and this event will handle event dot data will consist of this data information so here also it can be handled and once it uh, does some operations heavy computation operations and it can again post the message back to the main main thread so in this way the data communication can happen between the main thread and the worker thread this is how we can communicate from main thread to the worker thread so hope you understand this so in case if there are any errors in our worker script so if uh, there may be some errors in that case we have another event called on error so if any errors in the worker script happens so that would be triggered here in this worker dot on error this method would be triggered and uh, through this method we can handle or we can check what is the error uh, it, this will give three arguments like a uh, line number where exactly the line number is and the file name and what what is the exact message for that error so in this way we can handle or observe what is the error happened in the worker so there are certain points to be noted so this web worker while you are working with this web worker this web worker or a web thread uh, worker thread will have a separate context so it will work in a separate thread and in a separate context it will have its own isolated global environment so that would be different from the javascript uh, environment so that's the first point and second point this worker can't directly manipulate the dom operations it will now have the access to the dom window and document so this here you can't access the document dot get id so these type of document uh, operations dom manipulations or uh, window document these objects can't be accessed here in the worker and also while you are passing the data here if you observe your post message and you are passing some data and this data is passed by value so it's like passed by copy you are passing the copy of this object or this value why we are passing this as a value because these are multi threaded scripts so this script will be running and this script is also will run in the same time concurrently so in order to avoid the data data mismatch this values are passed by value passed by copy not by passed by reference so moreover this web worker is not part of javascript so this is html5 feature this is a mainly a browser feature we can understand this as a browser feature so if you want to stop or terminate any of the web worker so you can uh, take this object reference and just you can keep this here so just do dot terminate if you say this as dot terminate so immediately the working web worker will stop it will not run so if you want to terminate that you can do this okay and uh, in the web worker if you want to import any of the third party libraries or any scripts that you can do with the help of this import scripts so we have import scripts so that you can do like a you can do this import scripts like this you can import the scripts or third party libraries any of the things so like this you can if you you have multiple scripts so then you can do like this so this is how you can import third party libraries or any scripts in your application also you can import in this way you can import in the web workers so if you want to check the browser compatibility whether the web worker is available in the browser or not so this is how you can check type of worker should not be equal to undefined if that is equal to undefined it means the browser is not going to support this worker web worker concept so this is how you can check the browser compatibility this type of worker should return function in that case this worker is available in the browser so this is how this is the check we can do whether the browser compatible is available for the web worker or not this is how we need we go we need to check it so coming to the use cases so 
as we discussed that we mainly use the web workers for the highly computational uh, scripts so which takes a large time which should be happen in the background uh, and it should not disturb the javascript main thread so in this type of use cases you should go with the web workers so mainly we can use this for the image processing and filtering applications and uh, analyzing the video or audio data so if you want to analyze each bit by bit video and audio data then this would be the uh, web worker would be the best option for us also checking the spell check in a large file and the syntactical highlighting text formatting things also will help so in these use cases in this all use cases we can go with the web workers where we can where the script takes more time and blocking the ui then you can use this web worker and you can handle that in a separate thread not disturbing the main thread so that you can unblock your ui so this is all about the web worker hope you understand the video thanks for watching so uh, let me show you the output so i have missed showing the output so the first step is like message posted from the web worker so that is because uh, let me show this as soon as you run this application so this uh, web worker so this will call post working so worker running so now this would be executed message posted from web worker and you will be having this one so that's the reason the first console is this one and the second console is this is going to post the message to the web worker so now it's this on message event would be triggered here worker received the data from there so that's the reason you got this message hope you understand the web worker so thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos